Uh, today I'd like to talk about uh, Cortez the Killer, uh, my, probably arguably my favourite Neil Young number. Neil Young for me fluctuates between the uh, dirge-like proto-grunge growl to the more haunting folk-like uh, tonalities of his, his acoustic pieces. And this album, Zoomer, is a real favourite of mine. It's a significant album in terms of the history of Neil Young and Crazy Horse, as it's the first album, I think, uh, where Crazy Horse reconvene after the death of uh, Danny Witten. And of course, uh, Frank San Pedro steps in, um, and he's an absolute perfect fit, I think, that making this album a real seismic moment. But it has to be said, Zoomer is a rather gloomy and dark record, overshadowed, of course, by... Uh, Young's preoccupations with the infidelities of his then girlfriend Carrie Snodgrass. The album literally throbs with a palpable sense of loss and heartache. The Cortez the Killer is my favourite track on this record with its lengthy intro and chiming mournful guitar which very much sets the tone for the number. It was actually a track that was banned in Spain as it offended the Franco regime because Cortez is a national hero over there. However, after Franco was no longer in power, the track was simply called Cortez on any subsequent uh, issues of this in Spain. But it's a fascinating track anyway. It, it perfectly evokes this collision of old and new worlds. Many critics have argued, and quite rightly so, that Neil Young's view of the Aztecs in this is somewhat idealised. In fact, one critic has written, Neil Young writes some good songs, but his Mesoamerican scholarship leaves a little to be desired. And as I said, of course, uh, he is accused of uh, presenting us with a very idealised, I would say sanitised version of the Aztecs. In fact, Rolling Stone went on to say that uh, uh, despite the song's con contention that war was never known to the Aztecs, in actuality they were in near constant state of war. And that while the song claims people sacrificed themselves so others could go on, in reality, innocent people were tied to posts, brutally tortured and killed. But the song is inspired, we presume, from the title by that murderous conquistador Hernan Cortes. Uh, he was part of that generation of Spanish colonizers who were responsible for colonizing large chunks of uh, South America. The song also alludes to Montezuma, of course, who died fighting um, Cortes's, uh, Cortes's men. Anyway, in terms of the song, the lyrics come in at, at about three minutes, 23, and we get, uh, uh, he describes Cortes and he describes his galleons and guns reaching the shores of the new world. Uh, incredibly atmospheric, powerful stuff, if uh, not uh, historically incredibly dubious. Young explains that here lived Montezuma, the Aztec emperor, who was full of wisdom, uh, incredibly wealthy, but that his civilization was doomed regardless of his achievements and serenity. The whole song consists of eight verses. The first verse very much focuses on Cortez. The other verses um, describe Montezuma and his and his world. And in verse eight, Cortez is blamed for being the killer. We get that wonderful contrast at the beginning. Galleons and guns juxtaposed with uh, cocoa leaves and pearls. But it's this uh, mysterious she, this woman that's mentioned that uh, throws some doubt as to, to what the song may well be about, whether or not the the, it's a kind of a deflection whether or not this historical account or event is merely a metaphor for the internal conflict conflict within Neil Young. In fact, he sings, uh, and I know she's living there and she loves me to this day. Uh, I can still remember when or how I lost my way. And there was this dynamic shift as the song uh, veers away from the third person to the first person, making it much more personal. Of course, when asked about the song, Neil Young famously a bit snippish, said, what the fuck am I doing writing about Aztecs in Cortes and the Killer like I was there wandering around? Because I only read about it in a few books. A lot of shit I just made up because it came to me. Certainly the lyrics do come across as a loose collection of impressions. Neil Young has actually stated in concert that uh, he wrote the song while studying history in high school in Winnipeg. So it seems to almost contradict what he's just said. Nevertheless, the atmosphere of this track is certainly established by those, those very heavy, ponderous, big, roomy chords that he uses. And that slow, ponderous beat that gives the impression of this approaching doom. Um, and the song, interestingly, the song fades out about seven and a half minutes. Uh, apparently, uh, I was told that was due to a power cut and they're using the, they lost the power to the uh, mixing the mixing desk or the recording desk or whatever it was. Um, when uh, Young was uh, informed that that had happened, apparently rather dismissively said, well, I didn't like the last verse anyway. 
And although we don't know the mysterious content of this last verse, Neil Young in 2003 uh, added a couple of lines at the end of the song during his Greendale tour, singing, the ship is breaking up on the rocks, sandy beach, so close. If this was the mysterious final verse, and perhaps it does give some credence to this song being some sort of allegorical representation of the, the breakup of his relationship. There have been other interpretations, of course, suggesting that the the uh, according to the literature, um, uh, Mesoamerican literature, the temple is the temple is often referred to as she, uh, or possibly another interpretation is the eye represents humanity in its current standing, and she being the planet, the environment. I suspect we're kind of kind of going off at a tangent here. I think it's a mixture of uh, Young's grieving for this broken relationship, which uh, pollutes somehow or or maybe this historical, albeit inaccurate historical account provides a perfect vehicle for this grief. Anyway, so what do you think of Neil Young's Cortez the Killer? It would make my top five. I think I really, really enjoyed this track. Uh, I saw him do it live on the Psychedelic Pill Tour, uh, which was uh, interesting. Anyway, Happy New Year to you all. I look forward to our next chat, which will be uh, probably the end of January. And I uh, hope you're all staying safe and warm, and more importantly, that you keep listening.